Hi, I'm Chris Bailey. I'm a Blender YouTuber at C Bailey Film. Today, I'm bringing you this tutorial with CG Cookie. We're going to be looking at GM G. We're going to be showing you the basics of geometry nodes, how to get started, and how to use it. Let's jump in. Now, don't forget to check out cgcookie.com. You could start a free trial today and enjoy all the amazing benefits you get by being a member. All right, so welcome to this quick breakdown uh, intro to geometry nodes. Now, just as a preamble, what we're going to be looking at is geometry nodes as it exists right now in Blender 2.92. There are a lot of additions that are coming in future editions of Blender, and we're going to try and keep covering those as they come out so that you can stay up to date with what you can do with this amazing tool. Now, I've just got a very simple scene actually that I um, put together in a live stream over on my channel at C Bailey Film a little while ago, and I thought I'd use it as an example here. Now I've got my plane, just so you know what's on it, I've got a subdivision surface with five levels of subdivision just to really uh, create a lot of geometry onto this this plane. I've got a displacement modifier as well. At the moment I've got it turned off and it's attached to a um, a texture here. Now um, I'm going to turn up the strength of my landscape just to give myself a little bit of geometric definition to make it look a bit like ground. Now, in order to get to the geometry node window you want to create a space for yourself and uh, drag up a window and you want to select uh, just in the drop down menu right here, Geometry Node Editor. And the first thing you do is you can select the object you want to use Geometry Nodes with and click New. Immediately, it'll set up a new Geometry Node group. You can name it whatever you want. Let's call this Rocks and Grass. And uh, it takes the input, which is the geometry itself, and it has an output, which is what our final result's going to be. Now, one of the key concepts in geometry nodes is the idea of a point. So we can instance points across our geometry and manipulate those points, change their position, scale, rotation, and then we can instance geometry wherever those points exist. Think of a point uh, as like a particle, right? Particles are the same kind of thing. It's something that doesn't necessarily render until you attach some kind of geometry to it or some kind of thing to it. It's just a data point in space. So first thing I'm going to do is instance some points across our plane. So I'm going to hit Shift A and I'm going to go down to Point and I'm going to go Point Distribute. So this is going to, well, it will instance points across my uh, my, my object, but uh, instance is probably the wrong word to use because later we're going to instance geometry to where those points are. So it's a bit confusing if I say that. So we're going to just create some points and distribute them across the plane. Now, if I increase the density, you'll start seeing these boxy things appearing. And if you, you kind of see it's got some flow to it. Um, if I change the strength of my displacement, you can see they move around, right? So they're following the surface of the plane object. But you notice the planes disappeared. And what happens is we're basically replacing the geometry. We're taking the uh, position of all the vertexes in our geometry and we're using those to then know, okay, well, where along this plane should we distribute all these points? And so that's how you get the topography there. But we want to keep our plane, then we need to actually create another node here called a join node. So join geometry node. So if I take my original input, which is the plane as it is before we've done anything to it, and I take our new version of it here, where it's got these points distributed, I can combine them together and then send this to the output. And bam, you're going to see your geometry appear again. Now, if I go to render view, you'll see um, none of these points are rendering um, and a bit of depth of field on the camera. Gotta love that new EV depth of field. Beautiful. So these points are literally just points in space. So we need to actually instance some geometry wherever these points are. So I'm going to create another node here. I'm going to go Shift A, Point, and I'm going to go Point Instance. And I will drop this in. Now it asks me, what do I want? Object, collection. So you can get a whole collection of objects. I'm just going to do a single object. I've made a, a rock uh, object already. I'll show you that to you. So this rock is literally just a simple uh, simple sphere that I've squashed down. I put a subdivision surface sub, uh, modifier with a viewport level of 4. Let me make sure my render is 4 as well. And over here I've got a displacement modifier on that as well. So that's what's going on here with this. So jump back over and uh, I'll grab that object. So I've called it rock. And now, whoa, what's going on here? Well, if you zoom out, see we've generated thousands of rocks and they're all humongous. So we need to change some things. I'll come back down to density of, keep it like a density of 10 for now. First thing we need to do is change the scale. Now, 
You might think to yourself, all right, well, I want to change some scale, so I'll type in scale and, oh, here we go, point scale, great. So I've made my geometry, now I'm going to throw my point scale down here and I'm going to change my scale, but this actually isn't going to work. Whenever you are instancing geometry in geometry nodes, once you do that, it's like the last step. You can't change the geometry once you've instanced it. Not, not in the current build, right? What you want to do is change the points before you instance the geometry. So since we want to change the scale, we actually want to change the scale of our points, not our rocks after we instance them uh, across our object. So if I plug this back in here and unplug this and take point scale, I can bring it back over here. Now it's going to work. Of course, nothing's happening yet. And this also does introduce some new ideas. So what is this? The attribute here and factor. What, what is it asking for for me? So in geometry nodes, one of the biggest things that you're going to deal with are these ideas, uh, this, this, this thing called an attribute. An attribute is basically like a spreadsheet that lives on an object and it has all these different um, sort of labels with some kind of value attached to them. Think of them as variables if you're into programming or if you've watched my, my Python tutorial. An attribute is a variable that has some kind of number in it or string or anything in it. Attributes are really powerful and it's one of the key aspects of geometry nodes, especially going forward, they're going to be even more important for you to understand. But we're just going to put a bookmark on this, we'll come back to it in a second. What we're going to do with point scale is actually switch it to vector. Now I can change these vectors, you know, I could bring this down to like point 0.1 and I could bring this one down to point 0.1 and this one down to point 0.1 and now all of my rocks are point 0.1 in size. That's a bit labor intensive to type that three times. So what I can do is I can grab a value node, which is just a single number, and I can plug it into this vector, and now it's going to put whatever this number is in all three of those for me. So I can go even smaller, and I'm going to hold down shift, and I can kind of move around, and there you go. Now, uh, all the rocks are the same size, and that doesn't look very great. So we need to put some randomness in here. So thankfully, there's a cool node for that. Instead of point scale, what we can use to create randomness, search attribute, we can come down to attribute randomized. So now we're going to talk about attributes in a way that's relevant, okay? I'm going to drop this right here. Now this is going to, we're going to be replacing over the information that's put in with scale. So this is irrelevant now, but what we need to do is we want to randomize the scale attribute of our object. So um, an example of attributes are scale, position, rotation. Those are like the basic ones. The UV is also an attribute um, and you can make attributes. You can call this whatever you want. You know, we could say, okay, I want to make a random attribute called um, fire and I'm gonna set my minimum max and now it's gonna add in an attribute called fire and it's gonna put a random number between zero and one into this object. And now I could use that number later somewhere else if I wanted to. In this case, we're gonna use one of the pre-established ones, which is scale. So if I just type scale in, you can see automatically everything gets huge. And if I just hold down shift and drag this down just to kind of make it small, you can see now we have variation in scale, tiny ones and big ones. And so what it's doing is it's taking a single number, this this floating point number between 0 and 0 0.03 and it's generating a random number and for each of the points it's changing the value in scale. Now if I made this instead of a float a vector um, I could create a random value between x, y, and z so they're going to be like some are going to be really thin some would be really big but I want to keep uniform a uniform scale I think that looks a little bit better um, in this particular case. So I can adjust that. I can come back to density and I can change this. Now what's so cool about it is I can come over to my displacement and my original ground object and you know I can change the strength here and you can see that as this object changes all these things are going to just appear on the object and track with it. Now we can do the same thing with rotation. So it's another attribute. So I can shift D to duplicate, drag this over here and I can type rotation. And now these guys are going to rotate but that's eh, a bit crazy. I don't want them rotating all over the place. Well, this is a good chance to use vectors. So I can come over here and say, okay, um, I want the minimum rotation to be zero, 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 and I don't really want to rotate on X or Y, I just want to rotate on Z. So I can just drag this number up and now it's going to create a random value within that. Now all these rocks, they look a little bit high to me, like I'd like them to kind of rest a bit more in the ground. So uh, I'm going to add in a, uh, let's see, I'm going to add a transform node, drop that down here, and I'm just going to bring all of them uniformly down a little bit so they're intersecting. All right, now if I want to introduce another object, so for example, grass, what I could do is I could take this whole system, I can box select it just like this, shift D, bring it down, get another 
join geometry node. I'll just make this a little bigger so you can see it. Shift D, drop this down and stick this into here. And then what I could do is come over to my group input and bring my geometry in. And then instead of the rock object, I could switch to collection. Now I've got some grass over here. I can zoom over this. Just got a couple of splines, um, just some curves. And uh, I've just set those up in different shapes. So I've got a, a variation. Um, and now what I can do is I can grab the, the grass collection. And instead of whole collection, I can turn that off and it's going to just use the objects within the collection itself. So now I need to make things a bit bigger because uh, right now they're a little too small. So I could just do my scale and there we go. So we start to see these guys. Now I probably don't want to be rotating it around the the Z. So I might make this one. And I also don't want to do this transform for these guys. So I'm just going to delete that transform. So I'll just adjust my my rotation values on my randomized rotation till they're kind of standing in the right angle. And I've got a nice bit of variation on them and I'm going to bring them down to they're far too big. And now one thing you'll notice is that they're all positioned in the exact same spot as all of my rocks. And that's because the seed value that I've generated here for the point distribute node, it's pretty much the same. So I could technically keep all this stuff here and uh, just pipe pipe over from this point right here and I'd get the same result, right? So if I want to change this up a little bit, I can roll the seed and that will change where the points are all positioned originally. So I can change that. And I can also increase maybe the density of the grass. So we've got more grass. So now you can see I've got grass, I've got rocks. And what's really cool is it's all dynamic and it's directly related to my ground object. So I can do anything to this ground object, like scale it up, scale it down. But what also is cool is that I can like take this and I can put it on other objects and it's going to just work. So I could, you know, grab a sphere here and go shift A. UV sphere, and then I could add in a new geometry nodes and then just put rocks and grass on it and zoom in. And here we go. Now we've got the same system at work. So now you can continue to layer up all of these different things and create more and more objects you can have in your scene. Now, some of the things that are coming to geometry nodes that aren't really here yet. One of them is it's there's no real easy way to make sure that the grass isn't going to intersect the rocks. So you can't take the position of all these rocks and come up with a way of subtracting them out of the grass um, unless you go really, really, really deep under the hood and force it to work in your direction. Now, in order to understand how attributes work a little bit and kind of, I guess, give you a hint at where things are going with geometry nodes, let me just uh, show you one last little trick. Eventually, we're going to have a spreadsheet that will show us what attributes are on what objects. So it'll be a lot easier to kind of pinpoint exactly what's going on. Right now, it's a little bit of guesswork, but that's all right. So what we're going to do is we're going to go over here and shift A and we're going to create an empty. I'm just going to get out of rendered view so we can actually see our empty. There he is. Just got snapping turned on and I'll just snap it to the surface. And I'm just going to find a nice little point. What we're going to do is use the position of this NP to change the size of our grass blades. So I'm going to come over here into my geometry nodes on my plane and I'm going to shift A and I'm going to grab an object info node and I'm going to grab my empty 01. All right. So let's grab empty 01. There it is. Now I can access the information uh, from where that thing is in space. Um, and what I can do is I can use this to compare things. So let's create an attribute to do some math. So I'm going to say, let's, uh, let's come right over here. And I'm going to go for an attribute vector math node. And I'm going to say, let's take the position of this thing. And let's figure out what's the distance between the, uh, let's see, the location of this empty and the location of each of these blades of grass. So how far is each blade of grass from this object? So I need to switch this first one to a vector and I'll take the location and plug it in. And for the second one, I'll type position and that will look at the position of each blade of grass and it'll calculate the distance between it and this empty. Now I want to store it in something and I'm going to store it in a value. I'll just call it scale two. Okay. Now we've just made this up. This is just a variable. It could have been called anything. So nothing's going to happen, right? But we've stored this scale two value. Now I can grab another attribute vector math. I can drop it here. And now what I can do is I could say, all right, let's take, let's take the attribute scale two. And I want to multiply it with 
Uh, so we're going to take our variable scale to, we're going to multiply it with the scale of each blade of grass and we'll use it to overwrite the scale. And bam, you can see, wow, all of a sudden everything's gotten so big. Now we need to change the size of scale too, so it's not creating this big of a difference. So I can grab another attribute vector math and just put it before these two. And I'm going to take scale two and I'm going to multiply it by a vector. And I will grab a value node here and I'll just plug that in. So we're going to multiply this guy and I'll just drag this down and make it smaller and smaller and smaller, maybe 0 0.001. Now there's one last thing I need to do to make this work right. So I'm going to switch this from original to relative. So by switching this to relative, I'm bringing in the relative location relative to the object that we've got the geometry nodes on. So if you've got it on an original, it's not going to quite work right. So um, I'm going to bring my value back up. Here we go. Now it's working. So. What you can see now is happening is wherever I have my empty in my scene, you can see it's affecting which where the grass is tall and where it's not tall, where it's growing and where it's not growing. Now, one other thing that you can do that's really interesting is that you can actually um, clamp the values uh, at the moment by using a color ramp node. So if I put a color ramp uh, attribute color ramp node in between my um, the, where I'm calculating the distance from each blade of grass to my empty. I can come over to here to this and I can actually say, all right, I want to take the value of scale two and I want to write this to the value of scale two. So we have overriding scale two and you can see it changed. What's happening is it's basically it's clamping it and it's never going below zero one now. Um, but what that means is I can now use this to then bring it up. So I never lose the grass entirely. Uh, but I could take this one now and I could bring it to like 1.2, for example, to go above white. And now these are all going to be a little bit taller and I can adjust the fall off just like I would if I was a material. I can even add in more nodes and like say, let's make this one black, right? So we've got this little gap where we're going to lose the grass completely if I wanted to like cut it off from my background or something. Well, thanks for watching this video. I hope you found it really fun and engaging. Hope you learned a few cool things about geometry nodes that you can start using in your own projects. Please like this video if you enjoyed it and don't forget to hit the subscribe button and ring the bell if you want to get notifications for when we drop new videos. Stay tuned. I will catch you in the next one. Until then, have a fantastic week. See ya.